Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about power, and specifically how much power a stepper motor consumes at a given input voltage and speed and stepper motor model. If you follow my channel long enough, you know that I have this odd obsession with stepper motors. I don't know how that happened, but um, I've really found it interesting to try to quantify the you know, torque characteristics, speed characteristics, all those different things. Um, in relation to our 3D printers. The one thing I haven't really known until now is stepper motor power. There's a lot of you know rule of thumb calculations on how much power a given stepper motor will consume uh, when you know driven by a certain amount of current. However, I've never been able to measure that directly until now. I recently picked up this power supply. It was recommended by EEV Blog. If you haven't seen their channel, definitely go check it out. Um, but this one allows me to output from, you know, say 5 volts all the way up to 60 volts with up to 6 amps of output current, which is perfect because I can run these output terminals into the inputs of our high voltage stepper drivers on our control boards. And then I can quickly vary the input voltage to test how a stepper performs under various conditions. The other nice thing is it does have a output wattage, uh, which is great because I can calculate and measure how much power the stepper motor is taking at different conditions. Here we have the Raiden bench supply hooked up to my Voron V2.2 printer. In this case, I'm using the outputs from the bench supply and routing them into the motor power terminals on my Fisec Spider V2.2. That board combined with the TMC5160 high voltage stepper drivers that can go up to around 50 volts allows me to test a variety of conditions here. I can change the bench supply from 12 to 24, 36, or 48 volts and get stepper motor characteristics in each, each of those conditions. The other nice thing is that this power on the Raiden bench supply is only routed to the two stepper drivers, the X and Y steppers. This is really convenient because, again, I'm measuring only that power consumption and not any of the other controller or any other variables in there. The only downside is I am measuring the power consumption of both steppers, but during this test I will only be operating one at a time. The total power that is displayed on the power supply will be the combined power. Fortunately though the idle stepper will be at a constant current and it won't be moving so that is a fixed offset we can subtract from the measured value to get the other stepper's power consumption. The final really great thing about this power supply is you'll notice it has a USB port on the front which I've just connected. It also has Wi-Fi, but the Wi-Fi I've discovered is a lot more finicky than just directly connecting the power supply to your computer using USB. Once the software is installed, we can just hit connect and have full control over the voltage and current settings from our device. And this is really where things get interesting because we have this output voltage and current graph that allows us to see you know, the current real time, but the important part is that we can right click and export to Excel to process this data afterwards. So what I can do is run a macro on our clipper side to run the printer through a combination of speed settings and current settings, and then from the ride and power supply side, and I can export that data, combine in Excel, and then quickly get a ton of automated data sets without having to manually record values from power for every single data point. This is really exciting because it will save me so much time in the future. I want to show you guys this G-code macro that I'm using, using Jinja. Uh, thank you to Kilocubit and Klee on the Voron Discord for helping get me started with this because I'd never used Jinja before, but it's really powerful what you can do. So this first command is the test steppers command, and it's important because it's kind of the high level command that's doing all of the uh, calls. And so we're checking if the printer's homed, and if not, we're homing it. And then the second point here, we have a start speed, end speed, and speed increment uh, with a nested for loop. And then the second one, we have a current range from 2.0 amps to 0.9 amps in negative 0.01 amp increments. So what this is going to do is it's going to iterate through different currents at a specific speed. It'll go to the next speed, do that same range of currents, and keep repeating until it's combined all of the different speed points and current points together. So it adds up a lot of points really quickly. This next is the actual command that does what we need it to. So this is the helper function. Uh, in this case, we are defining the printer 
maximum dimensions in x and y because we want to do a diagonal move almost as big as the printer is doing so it is ru uh, running at the constant speed as long as possible so we're defining our minimum position in x and y and we're adding 10 in order to find that kind of minimum corner and then the same thing with the maximum corner um, it is 10 millimeters from the uh, maximum in x and y next we do this basic calculation here that makes sure that we are moving the tool head for enough time or enough cycles in order to get at least 10 seconds of data because if you're moving the tool head back and forth once at 100 millimeters a second it will take say five seconds but then if you're doing that a thousand millimeters a second it's going to take such a small amount of time that you're not really going to get any data so this increases the num number of cycles based on um, the distance and everything like that to make sure we're at least going for 10 seconds we output the speed and current values that we're currently using from this uh, for loop nested for loop and then we're setting the current for the stepper that is currently moving in the core xy setup which is stepper y and we set the run current to the uh, target value next this is just going back and forth from the front left corner to the back right corner at a specific speed over and over and over again until we at least get 10 seconds worth of movement then once this helper function is done it goes back up and does the next increment of speed and current and keeps doing that over and over again until it collects all the data now we're ready to begin collecting data we have our macro set up with a, our start and end speed with our step increment we have the output log on the console that'll show us what current is currently running and what speed is currently running. We have our output graph posted from our uh, Ryden power supply software showing the current real time, as well as the readout from the power supply and the printer moving in the top left. So let's get started. In this case, this test will take approximately 30 minutes, so I will do a time lapse so you can you know, see the full thing in a short amount of time. Now that we've gathered all that data, we need to figure out the component of each um, stepper motor in this final value. So what we're going to do is we're going to go set stepper enable stepper x to enable equals zero, which disables it. And now we can see that stepper y, which is the only one enabled right now and is activated but idle, is drawing 17.43 watts. So this value is the constant offset we will be able to subtract from all of the data that we've gathered in order to account for what the stepper X motor has consumed. Here's a quick look at what that Excel data looks like from the Ryden bench supply. You get all of these values recorded every second with a timestamp, which is really handy because we can use that to sync this data log file with the clipper output, which allows us to figure out what data points correspond to what speed and current settings. Next we can compile everything together including the console output from Clipper which I can pair with a certain timestamp. I have the bench power supply data that again I pair with a timestamp and calculate power equals voltage times current. And then I can combine all of this data together into certain bins according to the current and speed and that ends up giving you this chart. Um, again, I got all of these data points, which is, there's a ton of data here in just around 30 minutes. And the processing time was almost nothing because I have this, this setup. So you can see here at low speeds, the power is fairly low. But as you increase, it kind of peaks around 600 millimeters per second, but then slowly decreases over time, which is a little bit interesting. I wasn't expecting that, though we do see in general that as the speed increases eventually we'll hit that knee in the torque curve where the torque starts to fall off so i'm really curious how all of this ends up uh, kind of working out 
So we'll investigate all of these effects later on as we get more and more equipment here to measure things like the waveform or the voltage and current going to the actual stepper, the output from the stepper driver, instead of this, which is the input to the stepper driver. Thanks for joining as I figured out how to log data using that bench power supply and run those macros to gather the data I'm, I'm needing. It's really exciting to get to see all the data gathered so easily and so quickly. Because if you've been following along with my Twitter, you'll know that this is actually the first step to a larger project I'm doing, which is to create a stepper dyno I'm using a BLDC motor, following along a Texas uh, University of Texas senior design project that uses similar uh, materials. Off the shelf from Texas Instruments, you can control a motor to a certain torque output, and that'll be really helpful because if I have a maintained fixed torque from the BLDC motor, I can resist that using a stepper motor and measure the torque output directly. Once we have all the macros set up and are able to adjust all the variables, we can get a lot of data sets like this on different motors, different input voltages, and things like that in order to better understand our 3D printers. <laughs> the only downside though is that it is fairly expensive to buy all the equipment. Of course we have the bench power supply, BLDC motors, motor drivers, controllers, I'm getting an oscilloscope uh, from a friend and I need to buy current probes, voltage probes, and things like that in order to quantify everything. So if perchance you'd like to help out, now feel free to donate anything you would like through the super thanks button on this video. I won't be creating a Patreon or anything like that for my channel because my schedule and kind of personal life can ebb and flow. Some months I may have a lot of time to work on projects and other months I may be slammed for months at a time. So I don't want to be accepting money from you um, on a month to month basis if I'm not providing content you like. Again, there's absolutely no pressure to donate. I just wanted to let you know that that avenue is available in case you feel so inclined. This week I should get the last remaining parts in to at least start moving the BLDC motor and experimenting with that variable torque output. So hopefully everything works. Um, I'm probably going to have to order some different components, but um, it's, it's really exciting. So I hope you all have had a good weekend, and I hope you guys have a good week. I'll touch base later. Bye.